Okay, so now we're going to take up the um, trig functions unit test for chapter 6 from Advanced Functions. And um, the link for this will be on the page below. And I would suggest that you try it before you watch this video. Or you can just kind of pause it and follow along while you're doing it yourself. Okay, so let's get going. It's going to take a while. It's a beautiful rainy, rainy day today. So let's get moving. 11 pi over 9, convert the measures below showing all work. 11 pi over 9 to degrees, round answer to one decimal place if necessary. Okay, so you know that pi is 180 degrees, so 11 pi over 9 will be equal to 11 times 180 over 9. So 9 goes into 180 20 times, and 20 times 11 should give you 220 degrees. Exactly. 3.748 radians to degrees. So now this time I have 3.748 and the best way to do this is just to make a little ratio. So this is radians over radians is how many degrees over pi you know is 180 degrees. So just using your little end thing, x is going to be equal to 180 degrees times 3.748 divided by pi. And that should be an x here. And that's going to come out to approximately 2 point, no, 214.7.7 degrees. Could do that on your calculator. I don't need to do show you my calculator. 167 degrees to radians. So can we have 167 degrees is to 180 degrees as x is to pi radians. So remember, I've got degrees over degrees, radians over radians, the one I'm trying to solve for, and I know that 180 is pi. So x is pi times 167 divided by 180 pi times 167 degrees divided by 180 degrees. You can see how I'm canceling up my degrees and I'm going to end up with radians and that comes out to approximately 2.91 radians. You don't have to write the right rads. Okay, the radius of a circle is 30 centimeters. Determine the arc length if the central angle is 2.1 pi. Okay, so you know that theta, you need to know this little formula, which we looked at in uh, chapter 6.1. So the arc length divided by the radius. So in this case, we have 2 pi, or 2.1 pi. Right? Our angle is 2.1 pi. We're de trying to determine the arc length, so that's my 8, and my radius is 30. So arc length is 30 times 2.1 pi. So 30 times 2.1 pi. Now you're determining a length. So you're not going to give your answer as, you know, something pi. You're going to figure it out using your calculator, plugging in pi, and you should get 197.9 centimeters. Okay, number three, if a ball travels around a circle of radius six meters in two and a half minutes, what is the angular speed of the ball in radians per second? So the trick question, it's kind of a trick question in that you don't need to know what the, the radius is. You just know that there's one revolution in 2.5 minutes. So one revolution in 2.5 minutes and I want to convert that into radians per second so 2 pi radians is one revolution so 2 pi radians is one revolution and we need to convert between minutes and seconds so one minute is 60 seconds. So you can see how we're going to cancel minutes 
minutes, the units, revolutions, revolutions. So we're, our units are going to end up in radians per second. So we end up with 2 pi, 2 pi radians in the top here, divided by 2.5 times 60. And that's going to give you an answer like 0 0.042. 42 radians per second. A little bit of a tricky question. You know, sometimes people want to use the six meters and you know work with the circumference, but it's not the velocity on the outside of the circle. We're just talking about the angular speed. So be careful that you don't get fooled by such a question. Okay, that's first page done very quickly. And number four, for each of the following trigonometric ratios, sketch the angle in standard position, identify the related acute angle, and find, oh, there's that magic word, the exact value, right? We need the exact value of the trig ratio, show all work. So I would suggest the first thing you do is draw yourself a couple of triangles, because if you look here, you've got a six, a four, and a three, so that's something related to 30, 45, and 60. So I'm going to write my two special triangles. So let's just draw them here. So if this is pi over 3, so that's my 60. Here's my 30. So that was the 2, 1, square root 3 triangle. So remember we started with uh, an equilateral triangle, cut it in half. And the other one is your 45. So 45... That's pi over 4, pi over 4, isosceles triangle, 1, 1, square root 2. So you need to know how to sketch these very quickly, and you're going to use that a lot. And use it in grade 11, so you should be okay. So first one, the cos of 11 pi over 6. When you're doing these questions, I highly recommend that you write this as 6 pi over 6, which is pi, and this is 12 pi over 6. That gives you a little better idea of where you should be for 11 pi over 6, right? So you shouldn't even need to think about that. So if this is 12 pi over 6, we're 30 degrees away here. So from here all around would be 11 pi over 6. And when I'm in this quadrant, this is where cos is positive. So the cos of 11 pi over 6 is the same as the cos of pi over 6. The related acute angle, of course, is this distance here. So it's always just the distance back to the x-axis. And the cos of pi over 6, cos is positive in this quadrant. Pi over 6, that puts me over here. I want adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's going to give you root 3 over 2. Okay, so that was easy. Now how about the next one? The cosecant of 13 pi over 4. 13 pi over 4. Oh my goodness. So this is 4 pi over 4. This is 8 pi over 4. Right? Now i got to go to 13. So if we go around again, this would be 8. Add 4 more. So this is the same as 12 pi over 4. And 13 pi, this is going to be 16 pi over 4 if we went around two complete revolutions. But we're only going to 13. So you know that pi over 4 is 45 degrees. So 12, this would be 13. This would be 14. This would be 15. That would be 16, right? So I'm actually going around this many times like that to get to 13 pi over 4. So let's quickly put on the cast rule so we can determine whether or not we have something that's positive or negative. So the cosecant of 13 pi over 4, cosecant is a reciprocal trigonometric ratio for sine in this quadrant. Sine is negative. So this is the same thing as the negative cosecant of pi over 4. Okay, remember this is just pi over 4. That's a related acute angle back to the x-axis. So the negative cosecant of pi over 4 is a reciprocal of the sine of pi over 4. So if I go back to my little triangle here, the sine of pi over 4 is 1 over root 2. 
So the cosecant would be root 2 over 1, and it's going to be negative. So negative root 2 is your solution. Okay, and the third one here. What is the cotangent of 2 pi over 3? So again, I would write 3 pi over 3 here. And I know 2 pi over 3. 2 pi over 3, that's 1 pi, 2 pi. So 2 pi over 3 is going to be in this quadrant. 2 pi over 3. Could you do that quickly in your head? How many degrees is that? So pi divided by 3 is 60 times 2 is 120 degrees. That means that my related acute angle here is just going to be pi over 3. It's always just whatever is in the denominator. CAS, cotangent of 2 pi over 3, is going to be the negative cotangent because tangent is not positive in this quadrant, the negative cotangent of pi over 3. So back to my special triangles here. The tangent of pi over 3, so pi over 3, opposite over adjacent, but I want the cotangent, so that's 1 over root 3. So back here I'm going to have, sorry I'm getting kind of messy, negative 1 over root 3. And your teacher will probably expect you to rationalize that denominator by multiplying by root 3 over root 3, and that will give you negative root 3 over 3. Okay, so that's your, um, that's your related acute angles for some um, basic non-acute angles. Right? Okay, number five, sketch the graph of y equals secant x for one period, secant x, secant theta. We know that secant is the reciprocal of the cosine function, so I would do a quick sketch. The teacher will expect you to know your period of a cosine function. So I'm going to go from 1 to minus 1. First I'm going to draw the cos function because a reciprocal, remember, is much easier to graph if you know where the... So cos, remember, from the start high to high is going to cross like this. So this is y equals cos theta. And the secant theta, get my red pen, so I'm going to draw asymptotes where there are zeros. These stay the same. Goes up on this side because this was decreasing. Remember when you're dealing with reciprocal functions, what was increasing becomes decreasing. And what's increasing here is going to be decreasing here. So there you go. That's y equals secant x. I guess we could have called that cos x. Okay, so that's pretty easy. Let's hope your teacher gives you one of those. Um, okay, now we're on to page 3. The value of sine theta equals minus 25 over 26, where theta is between 0 and 2 pi. In which quadrants could the terminal arm of theta lie? Okay, so you know that every trig ratio has two solutions between 0 and 360 degrees. So I got myself this really cool little circle drawer. So let's, let's use it. It was my splurge. Never good at drawing circles. Okay, so I want... Let's do this quickly. Okay, so we have C, A, S, and T. And I want sine theta to be negative... So sine theta is negative here and here, right? So that's 1, 2, 3, and 4. 3 and 4. Usually use Roman numerals to designate the quadrants. So it would be like 1, 2, 3, 4. Determine all the possible trigonometric ratios, primary and reciprocal, for theta in quadrant 4. So we're looking for the ratios. So we have minus 25 and 26 in quadrant 4. So I'm going to quickly sketch just a coordinate plane. And the remember that the radius, this is opposite over hypotenuse. In this case, the sign is y over r, as always. So y has to be negative. So I'm going to go down. This is going to be 
minus 25 this way, minus 25, and the radius is 26. So in order for me to find the other trig ratios, I need to know the length of this side. Simple Pythagorean theorem question. This is your, so we're trying to find x, and we have y and r. So x squared plus y squared equals r squared, if you need to write that out first. So x squared equals r squared minus y squared. r is 26, and y is minus 25 squared. So if you do that fine calculation, you should get 51. So x is equal to the square root of 51. So once I have all those, square root 51, then I can give you all the trig ratios in quadrant 4. Okay, remember just in 4. So when I'm in quadrant 4, the cos will be positive, sine and 10 will be negative. Okay, so sine theta is going to be negative 25 over 26. We were given that one. That's nice. Okay, so the cosecant, remember when you switch to the reciprocal function, you change the letters from C to S and S to C. So the cosecant is minus 26 over 25. Now normally you just write the negative sign. You can either put it out front or in the top. It means the same thing. And I want the cos of theta. Cos theta is going to be positive. That's adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's the root of 51 over 26. The secant of theta is going to be 26 over the root of 51. And rationalizing the denominator, you should write it like this. And then I just have the tan to do. Am I off the page? No. Okay. So we have tan. Tan theta, and remember your theta is in here, so I want opposite over adjacent, so minus 25 over square root 51, or minus 25 root 51 over 51, and the cotangent is going to be the root of 51, negative, over 25. That's a pretty easy question for six marks, I would say, wouldn't you? Okay, determine theta in radians to two decimal places. Okay, so they want this theta that's going around from here. Okay, that's theta that you're looking for. The principal angle between 0 and 2 pi. So, and they want it in uh, quadrant 4. Or maybe this teacher wanted 3 and 4. Hmm, that might be something you might want to ask, because I wasn't very clear in the question. Determine theta in radians to two decimal places. Okay, so let's say we're only, well, let's find both of them, just in case you need to do that. Okay, so let's do um, sine negative 1 of minus 25 over 26 and find out how many radians that is. So we have six, seven, eight, nine, ten. turn it on first. It's clear, clear, clear. Second sine of minus 25 divided by 26, and I get minus 1.29, 1.29 approximately, minus 1.29 radians. So that's saying, appropriately, that we're going this way, minus 1.29. So how far is it if I went all the way around here? Well, this is 2 pi, right? So 2 pi minus 1 0.129. So 2 pi minus, uh, check a do, oh, well, too late now, minus 1.29, and I get 4.99. 4.99 radians. This is in Q, Q4. What if I wanted the other one? Where would I be? So if its sine is negative, C-A-S, that means I need to be in this quadrant. So my second angle would be from here to here. This angle is the same as this one. So this is 1.29 radians, the related acute. So theta is pi plus 1.29. 
So we have a second pi plus 1.29. That gives me 4.43. 4.43 right reds in quadrant three. Okay, so you don't need these reds. You can just leave it like 4.99 and 4.43, and that covers your two solutions. Okay, I think we're into the word problems now. No, nope, a sketch. Okay, sketch the graph of y equals minus two cos one quarter x minus pi over eight plus three. Okay, so the first thing you need to recognize is this is not factored out. Your teacher will always try to trick you on that. I always did. And I always caught somebody until the end of the year when they kind of figured it out that you always factor it out. Now, some people have trouble dividing by fractions. If you divide pi over 8 by 1 over 4, you invert and multiply. So that gives you x minus pi over 2. If you're not certain, what you should do is expand. This times this. So much easier to multiply, right? So if I multiply this, I would get minus pi over 8. Okay, so I want to sketch this graph. I can do it very easily. I know where the axis is. The axis is at x equals, or sorry, y equals 3. It's always given to you right there, right? There's your axis. We're shifting pi over 2 to the right. And I need to um, recognize I'm using a negative cosine function. And it's going to start at pi over 2. And so I'm going to go up 2 from here. So this is going to be as high as it goes. This is going to be as low as it goes. Right? Sometimes it's good to make a little dotted line. But I need to know the period. So period is equal to... 2 pi over k, and in this case, my k is 1 quarter. So 2 pi divided by 1 quarter is 8 pi, 8 pi. Okay, so now I need to think about a scale here, because I'm going to start at pi over 2 to the right, at the lowest spot. So pi over 2... Um, you want to at least draw one cycle, right? So let's say, let's make this right here, pi over 2, just one square over. I'm going to start my graph here. Now I'm going to, so this would be 1 pi, 2 pi's, so a half, 1, a half, 2 pi, a half, 3 pi, a half, 4 pi, a half, 5, 6 pi, 7 pi, right here. Ooh, I just made it. 8 pi, and I'm going to finish 1 to the right. So my graph is going to end here, and it's going to start here. Okay, it's a negative cosine function, so that means I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 squares. Great, that's what it's supposed to be. Go back 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's going to be the highest point. Go over 4 and down to the axis. And 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. There's your other axis. So the graph is going like this. And like that. Isn't that beautiful? Not so hard to do. Very easy if you just make sure you've got your period correct. You've got it all sketched just like that. That was six marks. Mm, that's nice. Okay, number eight. Use a difference quotient. That just means an instantaneous rate of change slope calculation. Okay, I, I think this came from a test bank. So you might see it written like that. But don't get confused when it says to approximate an instantaneous rate of change. You know what to do. So where a equals 3, I think this should have also said x equals 3 and h is 0 0.001. So all you're going to do is you're going to find the function at 3 and the function at 0 0.001. So um, when x equals 3 and when x equals 3.001. I'm not going to do all this for you. It would just be a waste of 
my time and your time. So plug in X is three here. I'll tell you what the answer is. Let me see, I did it somewhere. Um, and I got first one, I get Y equals minus one. And this one I get Y is equal to minus 0 0.9959. And when you do the instantaneous rate of change, you're going to write it as minus 1 minus minus 0 0.9959 divided by, so that was when x was 3, and subtract 3.001. Or you could have flipped it around the other way. And when you do that, you end up with an answer like negative uh, 4.7, approximately. Okay, so I'm not going to do that for you because that, that's an easy one. Um, here we go, number nine. A nice word problem, finally. The depth of water in meters in a harbor is a function of time in hours can be described by a cosine function. The maximum depth is 12 meters. The minimum is 1.5 meters. At midnight, the water depth Oh, here we go. At midnight, the depth is at its minimum. In 65 hours, the minimum depth is reached six times, including the times at t equals zero and t equals 65. Okay, I highly recommend a very quick sketch or else you'll make a mistake that many of my students did. Okay, so let's just freehand it here. So the maximum depth is 12 meters. The minimum is 1.5. So I'm going to just make this 12. I'm going to make this 1.5. And it says at midnight, the depth is at its minimum. Great. Here's midnight. Right here. Right? Time zero. Midnight. It's at its lowest. And in 65 hours, the minimum depth is reached six times, including zero and 65. So if I go up and down... And up and down. It's going to get kind of messy. Okay, how many times it, has it reached the minimum depth? Including T0. That's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so this one, one, two, three. I'm going to number these so you, you believe me six times and now we're at 65 hours how many periods are there this is what people made a mistake of because they said oh six times so they tried to divide 65 by six to get the period when really there's only one two three four five periods okay so that's that's classic mistake here Okay, so that means the period is going to be 65 divided by 5, which is 13 hours, which makes sense, right? 13 hours for a for um, tides. Okay, what is the equation of the cosine function that describes the depth of the water in the harbor? Okay, so we need to find the axis. How do you find the axis? Well, you take the lowest and the highest. So 12 plus 1.5 and you divide it by 2. So I get 13.5 divided by 2 is what? 6 point... Oh my goodness, I'm tired. 6.75, right? 6.25. 6.25. That makes better sense. 6.25. That's my axis. So C is 6.25. Now I need to know what is the, so this goes here like this, 6.25. And I need to know the amplitude. So how far is it from here to here? So that's 12 minus 6.25 equals 5.75. That's going to be A, amplitude. Okay, so it's a negative cosine function because, as you can see, it's starting at the lowest point. So, um, 6.25 is 
I want to make sure I got this right. Um, did you see a mistake? Did I make a mistake? 6.012 plus 1.5 divided by 2, 6.75. I was right, I was wrong, I was right. right. Let's make sure we get that straightened around before we go any further or else it's going to be all wrong. Okay, double check your answers. Be smart. Don't be like me. Make a mistake right at the beginning. Although your teacher would probably just take one mark off if she or he was sweet and nice and kind like me. Okay, 6.75. That's going to give me 5.25. Right? That's 11, 12. Okay, so 7.5 and A is 5.25. And we have a negative cosine function. Do you see that? It's starting at its lowest. So y equals negative 5.25 cos bracket. Okay, so we didn't figure out the k value yet. So we have the period is 13. 13 is equal to 2 pi over k. So k is equal to, boom, 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 2 pi over 13. So I have 2 pi over 13. We have time happening here so we're going to use t we don't have any shift it's starting at its lowest point hooray hooray and then we just have to add the axis the shift up okay so there's the cosine function at what time after midnight did the depth of the water first reach 6.75 meters well, that was a really nice question and one that makes the calculation very easily because i just need to know when is it going to be on the axis? So this isn't midnight, right? Or sorry, this was midnight here. So this is the first time after midnight, right here, right here. Can you figure that out without doing a calculation? Sure you can. It's 13 hours from here to here. So how far is it to here? So I do half the period, half of 13 hours, 6.5 hours. How far is it from here to here? Another half of that, right? This is all symmetrical. You could divide it into quarters, just like your circle. Okay, so half of 6.75 uh, divided by 2 is 3.375. Three point three seven five thirteen. Thirteen divided by two. Oh no, this I was using this stupid thing again. Okay, so thirteen, yeah, thirteen divided by two is six and a half. Six and a half divided by two is three point two five. Why am I being so silly? Okay, so three point two five. Three point two five hours. So what time did this reach this? You're not going to say 3.25 hours after midnight. You're going to say maximum uh, depth, depth of 6.75 meters was reached at 3.15 a.m. Put it in hours and minutes. Don't say 3.25 hours after. Now, if you didn't remember how that all divided out, I'm sorry, I didn't have it shifted up. You could have written it out as a calculation. Um, you could have set 6.75 to your equation here and solved. Do you want to do that too? Well, you know what's going to happen because if I put 6.75 here equals minus 5.25 and then, I'm oh, sorry, cos. 2 pi over 13 t plus 6.75. Look what happens. When I bring this over here, I subtract, I get 0. I divide by this, I get 0. So I want to know when is 0 equal to the cos of 2 pi over 13 t. So if you do second function of 0, you know what inverse of cos is at 0, second cos 0. You should know right away it's going to be 1. Whoops. Oh, it's in radians. <laughs> of course. Okay, so 1.57 equals 2 pi over 13 t. Now we're going to multiply. Oof. So 1.57 
times 13 divided by 2 pi equals 32. Ooh, that didn't work. 32. What did I do wrong? Mm -mm -mm -mm. So we set this to 6.75. Let's run through the story. I didn't do this in advance. I thought this would have been a, a good enough solution for you. So we did 6.75. Um, so if we subtract 6.75, we divide by this. That's going to give us 0. 0 is equal to the cos of 2 pi over 13 t. So second cos of 0. I'm sorry. I'm doing something wrong. I get 1.57. Multiply that by 13. I divide by 2. Divide by pi. Oh, and I get 3.25. I It's because I didn't put the brackets. So I get the same answer. Hooray, hooray. 3.25 hours after midnight or 3.15 a.m. Okay, so you should know how to do it this way as well because that might be, uh, it might be a more difficult question when where the, what the teacher is asking for isn't right on the axis where you can just divide it into quarters. Okay, and finally, my goodness, this is a long lesson. It was found that an approval rating of a politician during the time that she was in office could be modeled by the sinusoidal function this where AT is the approval rating and T is the time number of days the politician was in office. If the politician was in office for eight years, give me the intervals during which her approval rating was going down. In other words, you want to know where are all these dips, right? From here to here, this, this. Okay, so we need to make a quick sketch of this because we need to know where is the politician's rating going down. And to do that, oh, okay, so first of all, let's figure out the period. So period equals 2 pi divided by k, and k is, I'm going to just divide it over here, pi over 730, 730. So 2 pi divided by pi over 730 is 2 pi times 2 pi times 730 over pi. Pi's are going to cancel out. I get 730 times 2 is 1460. So the period of the function is 1460 days, right? Okay. So it says the politician was in office for eight years. How many cycles are we going to have in eight years? So let's say eight years times 365. We're not going to count for any leap years here. And we get 2920. 2,220 days in eight years. So how many cycles do we have? Well, that's just twice that one, isn't it? If you don't believe me, divided by 1460, bingo, two, two full cycles in eight years. So let's make a sketch here. So we have, it's a very small, um, Let's say this is 0.55 here, 0.55, that's my axis, and I'm going to go up 0.25 from that. So add 0.25 to that gives you 0.8, it's going to be 0.8, and subtract 0 0.25, it's going to give me 0.3. Okay, it's a sinusoidal function A, there's no shift just has a small period so we're just going to go like this and we had two cycles oops should have probably left that y out of the way okay so we said that that two full cycles was going to be eight years so that was um eight years this is four years we're going to have to put it into days, though, because this is 1460 and this is 2920. So I want to know where is her um, 
approval rating going down. So I need to know from here to here. So this is one. And I need to know from here to here. So that's one, two places where her approval rating was going down. Okay, so knowing that this divides perfectly into quarters, if I divide 1460 by four, every 365, well, that makes sense, 365 days. So this would be every quarter. So this is 365 days. That's one year, two years, three years, four years. So between one and three years, and this is four, five, six, seven. So between five and seven years over here, so this is five to seven, years five to seven, and years one, two, three. And you can put that into days if you want, or just leave it in years. I think I would have been happy with either. Okay, so you should write a nice concluding statement. I'm not going to do that for you because I'm really tired. I've been doing math for you all day long. I hope you appreciate it. Please subscribe. Give me some thumbs up. Make sure you try this, and good luck on your unit test. Bye for now.